tour with the door. And with that being said, there's a lot of things that I'm going to tell you, and there's a lot of things that I'm not going to tell you. So we always recommend to read the manual. Um, otherwise, we'll be here all day if I tell you every detail. All right. So on the back side of this door, right here, you have a little latch. This sits right in here. Always make sure you latch it when you want to leave these doors open. These doors are very light. The wind can catch them and it can smash against your belly band and it will do damage to the fiberglass door, okay? Right here is your screen door. You're going to push that in and it shuts just like this, okay? I love it. So when you want to open it, you have to pull this back and then it snaps back right back to your door, okay? You do have this step and if you look inside here, you have three switches. You have your porch light right here. You have a light on the front of your trailer. And then this is your main interior light. Okay? All right, down here, these are your 13 inch tires. Every five to 6,000 miles, there is a rubber seal right here. You're just gonna pop that out. Three squirts of bearing grease every 10 to 12. Have your tires taken off and your bearings repacked. Okay? Every 10 to 12,000? Yep. Okay. All right, this is your outside plug-in. This only works when you're plugged in on the other side to 110 or 120. Okay, down here is a stabilizer. I did put it down. Um, you do have a hand crank on the inside, which is the same as this. We just cut it off and put it into a drill. Okay, um, and it sits right here, goes right on here. Crank them down, crank them back up. Always make sure they're up when traveling. Okay. This right here is your fresh water tank right now. This is a 12 gallons, but it is does have RV antifreeze in it, so it does have to be drained before you're able to use it. And your drain for this one is gonna be located right underneath of your trailer right there, okay? All right, this is your full size spare. It is aired up and ready to go. Down here, you have a bike rack or luggage rack, only 200 pound capacity, okay? Here's your 31 temporary, oh, 21, you're from Minnesota, 21. Um, and tell you, and I think you do all your paperwork over there before you leave. Sure. Um, this over here, this is your power cord. It is 25 feet long, right here. There is a 15 amp adapter that is on the inside of your trailer. It goes under the end of here to hook into a regular extension cord into a regular outlet, okay? This will run your whole trailer because you do not have an AC unit. So, put that 15 amp adapter, plug it in, you're good to go. All right, down here, this is your gray water, and you don't have a black water. So, this right here is your 20 foot hose. This black end, you're gonna unscrew this, take this, screw that on, give that a pull. That's how you're gonna drain it. Your gray water is 22 gallons. All right. This is your on-demand water heater. Right now I have the power shut off to this unit. If you want to turn it on, you're simply going to flip the switch, make sure your propane tanks are on. It will light itself. It's on-demand, so it's tankless. Now, if the power is on to this unit and the outside temperature gets to 32 degrees or colder, this unit will automatically turn on to keep from freezing. Okay? Any questions so far? All right, this is your city water connection, hooks up to a regular garden hose. This is for your fridge, this sucks in cold air, pushes up hot air up there, and we'll make our way to the front of the trailer. All right, looks like we have the 27 series battery and you also have a solar panel. This right here is where you're gonna plug your solar panel into, it's a plug and play, okay? Plug it in, set it up, face the sun, you're good to go. This right here is for your seven way which is this little guy right here. You're just gonna plug it up in there when it's not in use to keep it from getting all icky. This right here is your breakaway. Are you guys familiar with those at all? If it, it's like emergency, if it breaks away, the brakes engage. Yes, yep. Always make sure you hook it directly to your vehicle, never to your trailer, never to your safety chains, okay? All right, you have the dual propane tanks. Right now they both are full um, and they're both open. This right here has a little arrow. It's pointing to this tank. It will use this tank first. When this runs empty, this is not gonna be clear anymore. It's gonna be red. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna spin it around to the other side. Then you'll use this tank. If this tank is open and this one runs empty, it'll automatically start sucking from the other tank. 
but you'll still come out and this will be red. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. Now, we get the fun stuff. I'm gonna pull over the solar panel so we have a little bit more room. Um, and I'll pull up this. That way we just have more room. All right, this is your cover, and then this is your solar panel, okay? You guys can go inside. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start out down here. This right here is your main power switch to your trailer. Right now it's in the off position. This is in the on position, okay? This kills all power to your trailer, okay? So, when you're plugged into your seven way, if it's a true seven way, and this is on or off, it'll charge the battery on the front of your trailer, okay? Now, whether you are plugged into shore power, same thing on or off. I recommend if you're just gonna charge it, just shut it off. When you're not using it, just shut it off. Okay? Okay. This is your front dinette set. This turns into a bed, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hold of this, you're gonna lift it up. It has a leg, detach it from the table, detach it from the floor, and it's gonna set down on these little guys right here. Okay? Any questions about that? No? This is your crank um, for your stabilizers. And then that is your wheel. You can never travel with that wheel on. That's only for when you're stopped and you want to move it around manually by hand. Okay? Does somebody want to come sit over here? I'm going to swing that door open. <laughs> this door goes all the way open. Oh, it looks like you have a uh, dry toilet. The dry flush. Yes. Yeah. I didn't think about what it's called. <laughs> okay, um, so it's in the box. That's what's in that box. Um, and then if you look above where the toilet is, there is an exhaust fan, okay? Um, with that exhaust fan, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hold of the handle and you're just gonna push it up. There's a little red button, you're gonna hit the red button, it's gonna go up about an inch when you open the fan. That sucks all the moisture out of the shower, okay? Perfect. Any questions about that? Always make sure it's pulled down when traveling, okay? This is your shower slash sink. With that being said, um, you have to turn on your sink to be able to use your shower. Right in between your hot and your cold, there's that little white piece. You're going to just lift it up like you would at home, and then the water is going to come out the shower. Okay? That is not a gravity-fed system. So when you are taking a shower, you will have to turn on the drain pump, which is located right underneath the light. Okay. See it. Okay. That is going to pull the water back to the gray tank. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I'm gonna shut that off. All right, shut the door. All right, we'll talk about this right here. This right here is your stove. It's kind of like a Coleman stove. Um, you can't turn these, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna push it down. You're gonna light your lighter, bring it down here, and then turn it. That's how you're gonna light it. That right there is your sink cover, okay? Slash cutting board. Now, you cannot travel with that in your sink. That has to be put somewhere else. Sure. Um, it will become a flying hazard or it could just damage your sink by jiggling around, okay? And if you wanna look to the other side of you right on that wall. Oh, I see. Yes, so you have some features over there. One of those are going to be a voltmeter. It's a little circle round thing. Yep. That is the voltage of your battery on the front of your trailer, okay? Um, now that is a deep cycle marine battery, so they do recommend Minnesota winters, bring it inside, unless it's on a trickle charger, okay? Um, when that gets to 11, they'd like you to charge it as well. They don't ever recommend draining those batteries completely dead because you will lose the life expectancy of your battery, okay? Um, and then you should have a black box over there with a little red power button. That is for your on-demand water heater, okay? Um, with that being said, right now the power shut off outside. Once we turn the power on outside, you'll have power to that unit. That power button on that little black thing is only for that unit. It turns off the screen. The C and the F is Celsius and Fahrenheit, depending on how you want to read it. The up and the down is to control your water temperature. So we'll talk about the fridge behind you. This is your fridge. So you're going to hit your power button right here. Oh, there we go. All right, so now it's on propane. This is battery and this is um, plug-in. So with that being said, 
Um, you don't have to go outside to light it. All you have to do is hit this button for your propane. Okay, it'll automatically right. light itself. Okay, um, obviously shore power is the best for your fridge. Your battery, I don't recommend running it. Um, only for emergency uses, only for a few hours because it will drain your battery on the front of your trailer. Okay, otherwise just shut it down when you get to where you're going. Either plug it in or turn your, turn your propane on. Okay, this right here, you have to push this down to be able to open it up just like that. You got a pretty blue color. You do have cool. a freezer in here as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for one cup yeah. <laughs> um, as soon as you shut this it automatically locks okay okay um, so when you want to shut it off you're just gonna do that now with these fridges if you turn it on and you hit you hit like the battery and you're like oh I didn't mean to hit the battery and you go to hit the other one sometimes it'll get mad and it'll, it'll flash the lights will go this way and then it'll go back but it'll go back to the first setting that you picked so it's like a brain in the inside, like you're pushing my buttons too fast, calm down. So just give it a second and then switch it. Okay. okay. Um, what was this gauge here again? This is just for um, for how cold you want it. Okay. Okay. All right, here's the good stuff, some of it. Here's some of your manuals for everything that's in your trailer, your individual manuals for your refrigerator, you know, all that good stuff. This right here is your 15 amp adapter that you do get with your trailer that I had talked to you about. Yep. And then this right here is for the fan above the bed. So with that being said, you're gonna hit it twice and it's gonna wake itself up. and it's gonna be blowing air out at 100%. That's what it states on your remote. Your hood vents open, your fan is on, the room temperature is 68 degrees, the set temperature is 78 degrees. Now, you can decrease it by hitting the smaller, and then you can increase it by hitting the bigger fan. But with that being said, 100% is the highest you can go, okay? Um, now, your set temperature is plus and negative right here to increase or decrease, and we'll talk, I'll talk to you that in one second. So this right here, if you hit these two arrows that are chasing each other, instead of air coming out or in, now air is going to be blowing out of your trailer. Oh, nice. For like mm -hmm. cooking and stuff. Yep. So now, with that being said, this does not have a rain sensor on it. So if it starts raining, you can actually shut the lid and it becomes a ceiling fan as it states on your remote. It's just going to push the air around that's already in the inside of your trailer. Okay? Now, the auto button. If I hit the auto button, you're going to see the green light that comes on up there that has everything to do with your set temperature. Now, if your trailer reaches 78 degrees, that'll automatically open up to bring air into the trailer, okay? So with that being said, never leave it unattended and um, don't have it on when traveling. And then just power it off. Cool. Okay? Any questions? I don't think so. All right, so I think the only thing we have left is to show you how to set up your bed and then obviously the awning and locking the door. Perfect. All right, I'll switch your spots. Ooh. All right. So since you guys did get the bigger bed, you do have the extra piece that's right here. This just simply comes off there just like that, okay? So this is your leg. You do have a button right here that you do have to push it to release and put it away, okay? So with the tables, you're just gonna bring it up and it's gonna slide in the back of those just like that and then drop your leg down, okay? Now, with that being said, you cannot travel with this table up. The table has always got to be in the down position when you're traveling. That table in the front, that table can be up. Okay? Okay. Nice. So, down here, this is a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, and propane sensor. When that goes off, you do have to exit your trailer. Okay? Right now, there's a green light. If it starts flashing green, red, green, red, and it makes a chirping noise, you have to replace it. You just shut it off with your arm. <laughs> That's okay. I do it all the time. Um... You do have to replace it, and that is hardwired in, okay? It's not just batteries. So if you're going to replace it with yourself, um, which a lot of people do, just make sure you snap a picture to make sure you get the wires correctly, okay? Now, over here, that is your um, fuse panel. You have 10s, 20s, and 15s for 12 volts. You do have breakers. Now, the way that the 2023 trailers are made is that 
they have breakers for everything. Um, you have wires for all the features that we do carry in your trailer. Okay, so if later on down the road you want an AC unit, we can put an AC unit because it's already wired for one. And it holds the value better. So if you ever, you know, want to go with a fifth wheel or whatever and you want to sell this one, it's super easy for them to add on stuff. Cool. Okay? All right. So we're going to check out in here. All right, in here, that is your 12 gallon freshwater tank and where your freshwater pump is. When you want to use your freshwater pump, there is a switch over here that says freshwater pump. You do have to turn this on to be able to use it. Okay? To bring it to your sink to or to your shower. Okay? But otherwise, if you're hooked up to shore power, you do not have to turn this pump on because it, it, it won't work. Okay. Okay? It won't do what you want it to do. And that pink stuff is the antifreeze? It is the antifreeze. And that is biodegradable antifreeze, so it's safe for people and pets, but I don't re recommend letting them drink it or you drink it yourself. Just make sure you follow the instructions on how to flush it properly. Okay? okay. I had somebody ask me the other day if if it's okay if they accidentally drink some of the antifreeze. And I'm like, you're not supposed to. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't. All right, in there, that is your on-demand water heater. You have a 25 foot power cord, okay? Um, there is a converter in there as well. That's the silver box on that side. Now there is a plug-in, um, just like these black ones that you have right here, that the converter is plugged into, okay? Since you do have the 25 um, attachable power cord, sometimes when you're pulling that in and out, it might unplug that converter. So let's say you get to where you're going, you pull it out, you plug it in, come in here, you have no 12 volt. None of your lights work, check the converter because sometimes it gets unplugged, plug your converter back in, you're good to go. And just so you know, your blinds, they just go up and down, just like this. Okay. Pretty simple. I always make sure that the windows are locked before traveling. This back window sometimes likes to shimmy open, um, and you don't want to do that. Sure. Just like that. Do you have like open? Well, we have an open. Well, yeah, we have an open. Well, unless it was like cold. Yeah. All right. Yeah, probably. You're probably just going to have to watch your head when you exit so you yeah. don't accidentally whack your head. I'll figure that out <laughs> soon enough. Some people will actually cut a pool noodle and make a slice in it and put it up there. I'm My height is perfect so I never hit my head, but I've showed a lot of trailers where don't you, uh, head, yeah. <laughs> you do hit your head. I'm sure it'll happen. Yes, this is 100 watt. All right. See this plug-in? Mm -hmm. That's what you're gonna plug into the side of the battery. That's okay. it, that's all you have to do. Super simple. Nice. Set it up, um, obviously both sides are a solar panel, set it up facing the sun. Cool. Okay. Are those just jumper cables? Those ones, yep. Okay. And then if we were, for some reason, without mass or whatever and using solar, we would just switch to battery for everything in there? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, now there's certain things that you can't use um, if you run out of propane. Like, the stove like and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But otherwise, yep. Cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to point with this because I'm short. Up here, you have a red tab. Okay? Right now, that red tab is sucked up. You have the same red tab on the other side, okay? So when your awning is put away, this is the way you want it to look. Both of those red tabs sucked up. If you put your awning away and one of those red tabs is still hanging down, that means this came, it's, it's not level anymore. So you have to reel it all the way back out. Whichever side the red tab is on, you're gonna grab a hold of it and you're gonna give it a little pull. Okay, pull it to whichever side the red tab is hanging down. side of the house. Okay. <laughs> you get part way, full right. range up. Yep, loosen your wing nut, drop it down, give it a little push up. I can't push it up too far, otherwise you can't reach it. 
Now when you bring your leg up, make sure this is completely out when it swings down, okay? Otherwise, if you go to pull it out and it's still kind of tucked in there, you will damage that end of it. Loosen your weight mat, bring it down, get the little push up. So now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna walk this out. Like that. Oh. <laughs> so you're gonna be coming home and staying in the stand yeah. in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Find space for in the yard next summer. <laughs> Alright. These will never go completely straight. They will always have a little tiny curve, okay? okay. These will flex with the wind. If it starts raining, you can lower one side, you can lower both sides if the sun is coming directly at you. Okay? <laughs> yes. Very nice. Do you guys have any questions about the awning? If you go too far, this is what's going to happen. Okay. It's going to fall back down on itself. Okay? So you want it nice and tight. The fabric just comes up off of it. with my fingers down here. Otherwise, people bend over and they try shoving the leg up and it falls down. It's way easier to do it that way. All right, if you look at the end of here, there's a foot right here. That foot needs to be flat like that. When we go to put this away, it literally sits right on this rail, okay? Push this side in first, then come back this way and snap it into place, okay? Loosen your wing nut. Slide it up. Flatten your foot, set it up, push in the back. And the reason why you have to push in the back first is sometimes if you snap this side in, that side won't go in. And now, if you watch those little red tabs, they get sucked up, okay? You have two identical keys. They are the same keys. These are the same locks for both keys. This is your handle, this is your deadbolt. We always recommend traveling with both of these locks. If you don't, since these doors are light and they are fiberglass and they will flex, your door might pop open, you're gonna look in your rear view mirror and you're gonna see that. Okay? <laughs> so this right here is your handle. You're gonna go to three o'clock and then you're just gonna pull out. This is your deadbolt. You're gonna go to nine o'clock. It won't pull out, so you're gonna go back to noon and then you can pull it out. To unlock it, you have to go to three o'clock and then back to noon, okay? Just like that. Who gets the keys? <laughs> Out. Wait, I thought that was, I thought that was just. I was like, wait a minute, the truck doesn't make beep sounds when it backs up, does it? We always cross crisscross your chains. Okay. Make sure this is down. This is your seven way. And then that goes right through where we hook. You just looped it around. And yep, and I'm going to hook it yep. right back to it. Okay. So make sure there's plenty of slack here. Okay. Because when you turn the corner and if it's tight, you will pull the pin. Okay. And that that much dangled near the near the ground is okay for chains? Yep. Okay. All right. So if you want to turn your vehicle on, turn your headlights on. That looks good. Give me a left. Give me a right. Let's Step go. on your brakes. Perfect. Beautiful. Let's go. Awesome. Nice. All right. 
Thanks so much. It. Enjoy your guys' new trailer. We will.